Thank you very much, Hans Holger. Good morning, everybody. And thank you for being here with us today, this morning. My name is Mario Zanotti. I'm Senior Executive Vice President, Operations and President of Latin America. I have been around for a while uh, in Melicom and in the Genevieve Group, uh, counting about 22 years. So I have a bit of a broad experience from the Motorola iconic brick phones to the latest iPhone 6. The brick phones now, you can only find them in museums. The iPhone 6, you will soon find them in our stores throughout the region. So it is uh, for me a great opportunity to share with you a little bit of what we have been doing and to give you some core messages that uh, we want to share with you today. It's important to understand that what we are trying to do is to build an integrated digital ecosystem that should attract consumers, giving them great experience, and at the same time, engaging them into activities that ultimately should result in higher customer retention. Needless to say how important it is to reduce churn in an industry that is reaching total penetration. So obviously, all of this has to be done. And at the same time, we cannot forget how important it is to be operationally efficient. It's actually the only way we see to continue to generate great returns, most importantly, great cash flow. Uh, that is what funds our future growth. So what is, therefore, Millicom Latin America? It represents today approximately 85, 86% of the total business in Millicom. And with the uh, final approval we received recently for the uh, UNE merger in Colombia, this country has become a crucial opportunity for us in the whole portfolio. I have always been a great believer in Colombia. Colombia has fantastic microeconomic uh, dynamics, has um, very, very good uh, demographics, young population, strong and growing middle class. I think it provides a fantastic uh, platform to continue to execute on our growth. But more on the Colombian opportunity and the business there will be presented by Esteban a little bit later today. And speaking about countries, it's important to mention that over the years, we managed to build a very interesting footprint in the region. So this now encompasses eight countries in the region. And uh, we built this not overnight, but over the past 25 years. The oldest operation we have, or let's say the most experienced operation we have in the portfolio today is Guatemala which we started in 1989 with three base stations, analog, one small switch, uh, which for those more technical would probably be interested to know that the processor was a Zilog 80, <laughs> which was the same that was used for, <laughs> you know, the old uh, computers that you could build yourself. So, I mean, we've come quite a long way and we built our presence not only in many countries, but also in several areas of the business activities. And this provides, as was uh, shown before by Hans Holger, an interesting diversification of our revenue uh, sources. So, but what else is important about these countries is that we have uh, interesting performance in economic growth, young populations, and a growing emerging middle class. And why is this important for us? Well, this, this is the segment that we are focusing on because they are hungry for connectivity. They understand the importance of the digital lifestyle and they are willing to adopt all our digital innovations we provide. So times, as we all know, have uh, changed. A lot of water under the bridge in these past 25 years and the industry has transformed. 
and so has our focus. We were, you know, in the past very much focused on producing products. We were very much focused on, you know, the, um, the factory of products. And we had some focus on the consumer. Now, what is the big difference is that we, are, we have a vision for the digital lifestyle, but the consumer is at the center. Consumer is at the center in all innovation we do, in all type of solutions we create, and we basically therefore strive for solving real life problems for our consumers. And what about the brand? And I always tell uh, those who want to listen to me <laughs> that in the past, in only one country, I won't say which one, we had 22 different brands. <laughs> so it was one brand for every product. The voicemail was a brand. The SMS was a brand. I mean, it was literally impossible to manage. Now we have a tremendous brand, highly valued, Tigo, which is a big umbrella, under which we develop our activities, under which we bring our value proposition to the consumers. More will be discussed on brand, brand value, and so on, uh, in the panel later today, when Luciana and other colleagues will discuss these sort of issues. So it is in this context that has to be understood what we're doing in creating the digital ecosystem and transforming the lives of our consumers. For example, we have created the Tigo Music through Consumer Insight. And what's interesting about Tigo Music is that it is today, simply put, the most successful streaming music platform in Latin America. As Hans Holger said, in all our markets, we have the largest, we are the largest channel for music distribution legally. And what's also interesting is that we have about half a million active customers growing everywhere and every day. And what is also interesting is that we have, since inception, streamed about 40 million hours of music to our customers, 40 million hours. But perhaps more interesting is that of those 40 million, 37 million were streamed last year. So you can see that it's a tremendous growth that we have in front of us. It doesn't end there. We also created the Tigo FIFA app, which was another very important milestone for us. 1.4 million downloads, four stars rated average in the different uh, application stores um, in the countries where we operate. Uh, fantastic success. And this was a multi-platform application that was created in record time, including negotiations and everything uh, with the FIFA and, and our other partners. Most importantly, it produced $1.7 million in increased data usage. It provided a fantastic experience for the customers. And this is the type of things that we should be doing later on to keep on engaging our customers and ultimately producing stickiness in the business. So in the future, in the coming months, we're going to focus on uh, more verticals, including sports, including video, and why not expanding on the music segment. So in Millicom, we believe a lot in focus and execution. I mean, what's, what good is it to have a great vision if you cannot deliver it to the consumers? And how do we do that, therefore, in Latin America? We do that by focusing and executing. <laughs> so we focus on four key business pillars, mobile, home, B2B, and MFS, or mobile financial services. And we execute through four across strategic themes. We call it ex the four E's, experience, that drives consumer preference, ecosystem that drives consumer adoption of the digital lifestyle, efficiency to continue to be relevant, to continue our lives uh, through this fantastic story, 
and to continue to ultimately generate cash. And entrepreneurship that drives ownership and ultimate, uh, an ultimate ingredient for flawless execution. Entrepreneurship, as you know, is in our DNA. We are pretty much entrepreneurs in Millicom, as uh, stated before by Hans Holger, in three or five months uh, launching a DTH in multi, uh, multiple countries. I mean, this is not a small achievement. It's, it's great by the, by the Tigo people. I mean, launching Tigo music uh, simultaneously in seven countries in the region, like this, in three months, that's not done if you're not an entrepreneur. So another thing to notice is that experience and ecosystem working together is what makes the business model sticky. And this is what we're striving to do. So let's now focus a little bit, sorry. So focus a little more on the first pillar, which is mobile. And this is a key visual for the Tigo Smart um, sub-brand, which is the premium sub-brand we use to market uh, our products in the market. And once again, focus and execution. So we focus on five key concepts. And number one is smartphone penetration. Smartphone is the cornerstone, is at the center uh, of, first of all, consumer requiring it, and second, uh, is the means to deliver the digital lifestyle to our consumer base. So smartphone penetration is key segment to focus on. Second is digital innovation. Third is data monetization. What good is it to innovate in a lot of products that generate a lot of data traffic if, at the end of the day, you cannot monetize that. No point, and we are a firm believer in that. Uh, this, we believe, to be one of our core competencies. We have to win the race for the digital consumer base. It's a new race, uh, and we are executing there also fantastically. And finally, the good old distribution which we also believe to be one of our core strengths. We say in mobile that we want to move from volume to value. <clears throat> and it's very important that what you say, you do. So basically, this is a way to illustrate how we focus. And you can see that we have almost grown double our, as fast in the high value consumer segment as we have grown in the other consumer segments. High value for us is more than $20 a month. So about a little more than double the average ARPU. And who would doubt that this is an important segment to focus on? But on top of that, we also talk about data monetization. And this is how it's, uh, I've shown this graph uh, 18 months ago. And I'm showing it again, and not only to show that the revenue continues to track pretty much the data traffic uh, development, but more importantly, gross margin is growing faster. That means that we are being more and more efficient. We say we do. We say win in the digital segments, and this is what we do. We deliver almost double as much growth than our competitors in the digital segments. Um, this is something extremely important because it means ARPU improvement, because it means consumer engagement, and it means obviously a broad base of consumers who are willing to take our digital innovative, innovative products. So in 2013, we promise you many things, and we have basically a short summary here. Number one, we promised smartphone penetration. We expect to close north of 30% penetration uh, for 2014. And this is very, very interesting because it will only get better. 70% of all the phones we sell today are smartphones. Actually, a little more than 70%. 
Another factor or key factor underpinning this is that the lowest cost smartphone today that provides a standard operating system and a very good consumer experience is about $45. At the time, we thought that 60 was good. <laughs> now we are 45 and we are hungry for less, less price. Mobile data growth, we have been growing at approximately 30% revenue uh, in mobile data. So it's a pretty strong performance there. Data monetization and cost reduction, we are now 24% uh, more efficient in cost of production of uh, gigabytes. And on top of that, we have improved about two percentage points our gross margins for data, sorry, for mobile data revenue streams. We are cross-selling today uh, in, between BUs, and this is a great uh, achievement because it's not easy, uh, but we have proven that this uh, helps a lot in churn reduction. You will see that later. And in innovation, well, as I mentioned before, great, stunning product, today. Tigo Music, Tigo Money app, uh, Tigo FIFA app, Tigo Sports, and so on and so forth. More will come. But the story doesn't end there. Um, we, uh, we believe that uh, in the uh, B2B area, there's a, there's a big opportunity. And therefore, we rebranded our presence there. The uh, Tigo business is the sub-brand we use to address the B2B segments in the countries. And it's important to say and recognize that in reality, this has been sort of a latent growth opportunity for Millicom for many years. We believe in focus. We can't do everything at the same time, but we, with the strong brand we have and with the strong consumer base we have, we believe we have very, very strong credentials to approach the B2B segment as well. And this will become an important uh, growth engine for us in the future providing approximately between 100 and 120 million dollars in additional revenues by 2017. Once again, when you have a big opportunity, you have to understand your market. The best way to understand your market is to look deep into it and think about segmenting it. So there's big companies, medium, big multinationals, medium uh, local, and small medium enterprises. We are prepared and we have strategies different for each segment. We are acting uh, actively developing solutions on top of the basic connectivity products that uh, we have been offering. And this, we are sure, will address the needs of the different types of customers that are present in our markets. Finally, who needs a new wallet? We have an app for that. <laughs> MFS is a great opportunity. It's a, it's a fantastic um, stickiness product. And what, once again, we have been focusing is on making sure that there is adoption of the product in our own customer base. So it's key to first and foremost have this product in the hands and making sure that consumers experience the advantage and understand the product. After, you know, more will come. And uh, as we said before, the opportunity is very big, not only to grow uh, revenues, but also to grow in stickiness. Today we have about 2.5 million customers using our MFS uh, products, the different products we have in the countries. We have generated about 45 million transactions year to date and moved above $1 billion in our markets. This, humbly I say, is quite an achievement <laughs> for a new product like this uh, in a region like ours. And we have many examples of many uh, successful products uh, from uh, domestic uh, remittances to international remittances to bill payment to utility payments to I don't know wallet uh, and so on and so forth. Today, with the rising smartphone penetration, the opportunity arises 
to converge all these services into one single mobile app. And this is a concept that we are testing both in Africa and also in Latin America. We just recently launched it in El Salvador and we are seeing great adoption. And for me, this is one of the largest opportunities we have to, as I said before, increase not only revenues, but also stickiness. And last, but not by far not the least, we are again continue to focus on uh, looking for opportunities to be more efficient, either operationally with OPEX or uh, in investment with optimization of CAPEX. We have, as you see there, several initiatives. And as I said before, we are convinced this is the way to guarantee future cash flow performance. So I hope I have shown you more or less uh, a quick summary of all the things that we have been doing in this time. And to summarize again in a very visual manner, I have a quick video presentation that summarizes a little bit better even what we've just been saying. Thank you very much, and I hope you continue to enjoy the day.